Hey guys, welcome to another video in my Linux Commands for Beginner series. And in this video, I wanted to give you guys a quick look at history. It's a pretty easy concept, but it's actually a very important one that as a Linux administrator, you're going to be using every single day. So let's go ahead and get started. So here on my terminal, you've probably seen me several times in previous videos using the up and down arrow to basically go through previous commands that we've run. And that's great because if you wanna basically you know, enter a command again, you don't really have to type the entire thing. You can just simply find it and then press enter and you know, you're able to execute that. Obviously, it took me longer to find the groups command than it would have taken me to you know, type that out. But sometimes you have very long commands that you want to re-enter. So going up and down in the history, of course, is going to be um, a lot easier when you find the command than retyping it sometimes. But that's really not the extent of history. It goes a lot more than that. In fact, you can use the history command and press enter, and you can see all kinds of different things here. Now, this is my personal laptop here, so what you're gonna see is a lot of the commands that we have been using for the videos that we've been doing in this series. And there's quite a few commands right here. And we can execute any one of these commands at any time. We don't actually need to go up and down through the history to find it. If we just type the history command by itself, we can actually just scroll through here and find the commands we want, but that's not all we can do. Notice that command, that either, or actually each one of these has a number on the left-hand side, and we can execute that command and refer to it by number, which is actually a really useful thing to do. So how do we do that? Well, remember, this command is command number 594, and the command was executed was here. Now, I have customized my shell a little bit, so you might have the output presented a little bit differently on your end, but the main important thing is the number and then the command, which you should have. So that was command 594, so I'll clear the screen. And we need to run command 594, but we can't actually just type the number. We actually need to put an exclamation mark in front of that, and what that'll do is re-execute that command. In my case, it's showing me the command that you know that number refers to, and then I get the output of the command, which is basically just groups J. So essentially it's the same as I just typed it in. It's just giving me the output, but you know, I can go ahead and uh, you know, refer to it by number. And that's really important because you know, obviously none of these commands are really hard. I can re-enter any of these commands just as easily as I can scroll through this list. But again, sometimes in Linux you have really long commands and it's just not practical to retype them. And in fact, you open a margin of error for possibly having a typo, which is you know, potentially a really bad thing that you could do. So perhaps it's a good idea to go ahead and look through here and you can just execute the history or the command accordingly. Now, notice that every time I enter a command, so I'll just do cat etsy passwd, just a random example, and then I'll do history again. We can see that we have the command I just entered automatically entered into the history. So I can do ls, and we see ls is now in the history. So every time we do that, we actually do see the command being entered in, which is great because it keeps up and it enters all the commands in there that we have run. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but before we do, I just wanted to mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers. Setting up your Linux cloud servers or Linodes is quick and easy with their intuitive cloud manager interface. There are multiple instance types available to make any app or service flexible and scalable. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Use your Linode server to host a website, set up a VPN, create a NextCloud instance, host a game server, and more. You can set up your Linodes in a data center nearest you with their latest opening in Mumbai in July 2019. If you need assistance, 24-7, 365 friendly support is available by phone or support ticket. Visit the URL on the screen right now to get started with $20 in credit you can use towards setting up your very own Linode. There are Linux instance types available for as low as $5 a month. So let's go ahead and get back to the video. What if we don't want a command to be in the history? So what I'm going to do is type a space 
And then I'm going to do sudo apt update to update my package repositories. I'll press enter. And you know that, that did that, so I'll clear the screen and let's do history again. Wait a minute. We don't see the sudo apt update command here at all. I did just run it. You saw me do it, but it's not listed. And actually, that's a very common customization is that anything with a, or a command with a space in front of it is not actually going to show up in the history. Now, this is dependent on the bash configuration, and each distribution ships a different configuration for bash. So yours might be a little different than that, but most distributions will have a default customization that omits commands that start with a space from the history. Why would you want to hide a command from your history? Well, a couple examples include maybe you have a command that has sensitive information. Maybe it's a, a old program where you have to type a password. And, you know, the bad thing is if, if you were to do, you know, type a password here, and I know this is not a good example, that's going to fail, but it's in the history, right? You know, basically, I this just pretend I typed a command that included a password. Now it's in the history. So if somebody hacks into the server, now they could check the history file, which is, you know, pretty much usually viewable by anyone. And at that point, they can get the password. So you don't want to include a command or run a command that might include some sensitive information. You can t type a space in front of that. So that way you don't have to worry about a command that has sensitive information being shown in the history. So a database server, for example, if you need to type a database password, that's especially important. You don't want that in the history. And one way to avoid that, if you can't omit the password altogether, is to put a space in front. So yeah, I know that was a very simple concept, guys. And I did want to make sure that you guys understand history and know how to get the history and how to use it. So yeah, it's literally that simple. You have the history command. You can, in most cases, depending on the configuration, hide a command from history if you put a space in front of it. You can use the number in front of an item in the history to re-execute that command. That's pretty powerful stuff. And another thing that also makes it very powerful too is if you have a, you know, a team of engineers and you, know, you want to basically see what someone else did to fix a problem, history is indispensable, especially when you're first starting a job. At a new company, you're supporting a server you never supported before. You can use the history command to find out how people have solved similar problems in the past. You might actually find a command that was used to resolve a problem because in a lot of cases, problems do repeat. And you can find that information in the history. It can be valuable to go through the history to see what others before you have done to solve problems. And if you know there's a bad thing that happened to the server, you could also check the history. And it's a per user thing, but you could check the history for the users to find out if maybe if someone made a mistake, maybe they removed a file that shouldn't have been removed or something like that. Or if a server you know went offline, you might find that they rebooted it or they shut it down. Um, and then started to back up. You'll see those commands in the history. So it's just a good idea to know how to get to those commands and uh, the history is indispensable. So I highly recommend that you guys uh, familiarize yourself with the history. So there you go. Hope that was helpful for you guys. And I will see you in the next video as soon as I have that uploaded. See you there. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.